All right, today we're going to be looking at the cross sections of some solids, and then we're also going to be calculating the volume of spheres. So in a prism, and at times in cylinders, the shape is made by stacking several figures on top of each other. And these figures are similar. So if you imagine the pyramids being, um, say, the square bases and just taking layers of squares and building them up but making them smaller as you go until it gets to that top vertice. If you stacked the same shape as the base, except for it's a little smaller each time till they reach the point at the top, you would create what is known as a pyramid. These pyramids are named according to the shape of their base. When you think of pyramids, we think of the Great Pyramids of Egypt, and they're actually square pyramids because their base is a square. So a slice of any three-dimensional figure with a plane creates a cross-section. These cross-sections are either taken parallel or perpendicular. And if we're thinking about it being parallel, we're talking parallel to the ground. So we would call that a horizontal cross-section if it's parallel to the ground. And the perpendicular cross-sections would be called vertical because they would be perpendicular um, to the base. Um, but they can also be taken at a diagonal. And we'll notice and we'll talk a little bit about what the diagonal cross-sections look like as well. So if the shape is cut parallel, then the cross-section looks just like the base, okay? So think of it as a stack of cheese or a stack of CDs. Um, that would be the parallel cross-section. And I'm going to put on here, too, parallel, and we'll call this um, the horizontal cross-section. So imagine it literally just slicing right through okay, the horizontal. If the shape is cut perpendicular to the base, and we'll call this one the vertical cross-section, and that would be perpendicular to the base. And that's going to take the look of a lateral face. So in this one is a hexagonal uh, prism. So if it is a parallel or horizontal cross-section, it would be a hexagon, and if it is a vertical cross-section, it is a rectangle. And um, if it is cut diagonally, and by diagonally we mean that the, that the cross-section is taken at a diagonal, then it's going to be a stretched out version of the base. So parallel cross-sections, same shape as the base. So if you have a rectangular prism, and you are told that it is a horizontal or parallel cross-section, then the cross-section shape would be a triangle as highlighted in this picture on the left. And if it is a rectangular prism, and it's a cross-section that is parallel or um, horizontal, it would be a rectangular shape that is formed, as noticed on the right. The perpendicular cross-sections are the ones that are vertical, and they are the same shape as a lateral face. So in a curved surface, when you cut a cylinder um, vertically or perpendicular to the base, which is perpendicular to the circle, um, you notice the highlighted uh, shape is more of a rectangle because we, that curved part just kind of goes away. So this would be a rectangle. And if you look at a cone, the shape that would be formed would be a triangle when it is cut um, perpendicular or vertical to the base. So cross sections of a cylinder, if it is the um, horizontal, the cross section is a circle. If it is vertical, the cross section is a rectangle. For a rectangular pyramid, a cross section that is vertical or perpendicular would make a triangle, and you can see that highlighted right here. Okay, and the cross section when it is horizontal or parallel to the base is a square or shape of the base. So it's either rectangular or square depending on the pyramid. Cross sections of a triangular prism. If it is parallel or horizontal, when we say that, it is um, parallel to the base, so it is a shape of a triangle on the left. And if it is horizontal, hmm. 
Actually, <clears throat> the one on the right is not horizontal. It is vertical. It is perpendicular to the base because you see the base here is the triangle. So when they change the orientation, be very careful not to just go with the way that the orientation of the plane is. Notice that that is uh, forming a right angle because it is um, this edge right here, you know, would be perpendicular to the base. So everything is in relation to the base. So this would be considered a um, vertical or perpendicular cross-section, and that is a rectangular shape formed. So when you have the hexagon or pentagonal prisms, you can see the different shapes that are formed. And um, this one on the right is kind of showing you that uh, diagonal that is more of like an oblong or stretched out version of the base. Cross sections of a cone. When you take the, okay, so this one would be this cross section here has two names, right? We would call it a horizontal cross section. We would call it a parallel cross section. What is formed is the circle. The one to the right is the vertical or perpendicular because it is forming a right angle um, with the base. And so that is a triangle when you slice it that way. And when you do the diagonal, as shown here, you get a stretched out version of the base and that would be called an oval or an ellipse. Cross sections of a sphere. <clears throat> if it is, um, you know, horizontal or um, vertical, it would form a circle. So we're going to fill out this table. Okay, I've made copies um, for you to fill this out so you didn't have to draw the whole table. Um, and so this is what we're talking about. When we're talking about this vertical, you could also write on here that this is the perpendicular. And the horizontal would be the parallel. You will see them referred to by both names. So if we do a vertical, remember the vertical is the one that is perpendicular to the base, and the base is a circle. What is formed is the shape of a triangle. If it is horizontal or cut parallel, you will see the circular base. And if it is diagonal, it will be an ellipse or oval. We'll probably do less with the diagonal, um, but it's important to know. The diagonal will give you a stretched out base. So in the triangular prism, when it is a vertical cross section, okay, it is perpendicular to the base, that will give you um, the rectangle, okay, and if it is a horizontal cross section, it is parallel to the base, and that will be the shape of a base. And the diagonal cross-section would give you a stretched out version of the base. So I can't draw a very good stretched out um, triangle. For the cylinder, the vertical would be a rectangle the horizontal would be the circle, and then you would have an ellipse. For the pyramid, that is a square-based pyramid, when you do a vertical cross-section, you will get a triangle. When you do a horizontal cross-section, remember that is the parallel to the base, you will get the shape of the base, which is a square or rectangle, and diagonal would be the stretched out base. For the vertical cross section of a triangular pyramid, you get a triangle. Horizontal is also a triangle because it's a triangle base. And then the diagonal cross section is that stretched out triangle that we can't do very well. Um, for the vertical cross section of a sphere, will be a circle. The horizontal is also a circle. 
the diagonal then is the ellipse. So when we start talking about the volume of a sphere, it's important that we write down and record this formula. So for a sphere, to calculate the volume, you will take 4 thirds of pi r cubed. Remember, volume is a cubic dimension. So you need the radius. You will cube it, times it by 3.14, and then by 4 thirds. Or multiply by 4, divide by 3, or change it to a decimal. However, with repeating decimals, if you clear them from your calculator, we'll have some rounding errors. So to calculate this volume with the radius equal to 6, you would substitute it in for the formula. You get pi times 6 cubed. <clears throat> multiply all of those together, you'll get 288 pi. And if we multiply that by 3.14, we should get, I know, 4.32 cubic meters. So that would round to a whole number of 904 using um, 3.14. This said to leave it in terms of pi, which would be 288 pi meters cubed. But if we were to multiply in pi, which we usually do, um, and using 3.14, we get 904.32.